Well, it was the World Mountain Bike Championships in Montserrat, Quebec on the weekend. And I'm joined today by a man who is no stranger to World Championships, Ollie Beckinsale. How are you doing? Uh, crikey, Ollie, must have some memories of the World Championships, I'm sure. When was your first one? Uh, first one, I was a junior in 92, so I was 16. So yeah, I think the first world, I think it was 1990. 1990? Yeah, was so that... I did 92 was my first. I think I, didn't, I had a little tot up. I think I, done, I did 18. World You've done 18 World Championships. I think so, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> have, you still, have you still got all the kits from all that? I keep bits and bobs, yeah. I, I, I keep, I've never kept bikes. I keep jerseys and I keep number boards. That's the two things that I've kind of got. So I've got bags of jerseys and bits of bobs. The old school one when they went, you know, old school British cycling white. Then they went to a horrible green one year. Yeah. Yeah, and some newer stuff. It was, yeah, it was cool. Some really good times and good memories. Actually, what do you think with the British kit this weekend? Oh, I'm not a great fan of the new stuff. I'm a bit old school. <laughs> I like the old school original white with the G, but yeah, yeah. Like really old, early 90s. But 18, so um, so back in 1992 then, was there like a formal British team back then? It was really relaxed. I mean, we were l lucky and there was, there was British cycling was really relaxed um, and there was no real national team. There was no lottery money or anything like that. And then we had sponsorship that year was from 7up, the drink. They had a <laughs> load of money because mountain biking was... Like 99, early 90s, huge, huge, huge mm -hmm. sport. So we had sponsorship from 7up for the national series. It was on Channel 4 on the Sunday morning on yeah. telly, immense. Yeah. Yeah. And then today had a national team. So there was six, it was in Bromont in Canada, so an expensive trip. Tim Flukes, yeah. a lot of guys know Tim Flukes, worked for Rockshark of many years. A big technician. <laughs> technician. He was the manager. Um, and then we had six juniors. Right. And even though I was a youngster, I got the sixth spot. Mm -hmm. um, and went away on that one. It was cool. Wow. And who were the uh, who were the elite guys from? Who, who was who was leading the well the world? So there in, was in... amazing amount of elite guys. A lot of them are crossed over from cyclocross road. Yeah. So you had Tim, David Baker, right, yeah. Tim Gould. So you had mm -hmm. the big rally team, big Peugeot team. What about were... what about on a world level? Who who's who won that race? Uh, ba -ba, who ran that race ninety two? Come on, Ollie, gonna push you on this. Henrik Janice, <laughs> I think it was. Danish guy, rode yeah, yeah. for Richie. Yeah. And then you had Frischnecht, Tinker Juarez, Tomac yeah. was still smashing it. Yeah. So, you know, year what, year before 91, he won <laughs> yeah. cross country and second in downhill. Going back to, uh, you said about 7F sponsored the team. Did you notice that there was a lot of uh, motor brands on some of the national team jerseys? I think I saw Suzuki, I saw KTM. There's a lot of, lot of sort of motor sponsorship in yeah, there. It goes in waves, I think, yeah. depending on the popularity. And I think that back then, mountain biking had a big, it was a new extreme sport. It was mainstream. There wasn't a divide between downhill and cross country. It was mm. just mountain bike. And I think that helped in a way. So we had some big corporate sponsors, outdoor sponsors. Now, I think with the mountain bike, I think it's in a really healthy place at the moment coming round. And therefore, especially with the Red Bull influence as well and the mm. television coverage, that then means corporate sponsors start to eye up. Mm. You know, if it's getting TV coverage, yeah, those big boys start having a little look then, I think. Yeah. If it's just made low, it's, it's bike brands, yeah. isn't it? So. so it's the World Championships. It's a hugely important event. Now, now I know that the downhillers throw everything. They throw the kitchen sink at this event. Yeah. It is massively important. Was it, do you actually, you know, does everybody approach it differently? Do cross country riders approach it differently as well as the downhillers? Well, this is what it's all about. Yeah. The only difference between mountain bike and cross country is they have the, the, they have the Olympic side, mm -hmm. but, the, but to be honest, that only comes around, it, that's a once every four year thing. Yeah. And, and I, I guess think actually people would put still put worlds above it. Really? In cross country? I think it's a cycling sense. Yeah, I think so. And I, it's the toughest race and it is the one race a year. And I, and I always, for me, it was it was bigger than any other race that year. Yeah. And I, for me, I, I, I got top 10 in cross country twice as a senior. And I'll put those as my best results ahead of everything else. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was and, and you do, you throw the kitchen sink out. Equipment, <laughs> prep, yeah. yeah, everything, big risks. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, lots of people did throw the kitchen sink on, at the race on the weekend. Unfortunately, Brooke McDonald had a huge crash in practice. Uh, he's had surgery on his back, so uh, we wish Brooke all the best uh, in hospital. Um, but let's go into the cross country. Uh, it's great racing. Amazing. Now, yep. the track, I'm, I'm not an expert on cross country racing, Ollie, will, I'll have to say, but the track looked actually quite full on. Some of those rock sections... Like that's like that's like World Cup downhill standard, right? Yeah, I mean it. It, it is. I think it's the the toughest track. And it's the been, toughest track. I think so. I'll put it out there as being the toughest track. Yeah. There's some big rock gardens that have been built, but the diff. I mean, some of those sections are built, but what they've done is the last couple of years is they, to make it more technical. They've 
found sections that are natural in the woods. Like the big rock slab, yeah. that, that's only come in the last two or three years. And they are big rock slabs. If they they're look big on TV... They're they... proper. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, Mont St. Anne, over other places, it always rains. You know, there's always humidity. It's always yeah. rained at some point during the week. Yeah. It can rain the morning of the race. Yeah. So it's rooty, it's rocky, and there's no... There a lot of the sections that... Even the linking sections, there's no smooth single track. There's always things that will catch you out. Yeah. But and like the, the, the technical climb, the switchback climb, even yeah. that seemed to have rocks in it. Yeah, I mean, all the way up, there's very few sections on there. And a couple of the corners, really steep, really loose. And when you get tired, you slip, then you've got to get off and walk. Mm -hmm. it, it just There's not many parts of that circuit where you're just flowing and kind of switching off. I was surprised, actually, in the men's race. There was, there was quite a lot of people getting off and pushing up some of this. I mean, yeah, why, why were they doing that? Just fatigue. Really? Just getting it wrong, yeah. Yeah, just knackered. And you're trying to process, trying to get up a rocky technical climb when you're knackered. <laughs> and that's when you just make mistakes, wrong gear, wrong line choice. And that's, it's funny, you see the, the really tough tracks like that, it splits your top 10 guys yeah. and your guy in 50th. Yeah. Whereas a lot of tracks, they're only split on time. Right. There you can visibly see he's really, really good and he's just good. Yeah. And then there was like, like a downhill flow in section and then there was a grass field. And I looked at that grass field and I thought, Oh my God, I do not want to be pedaling up through that grass field because it's going to be really sticky, right? Yeah. After, oh, after, after all the rain. Yeah, the whole thing is just every part of that circuit you're trying hard, you know, and it's, it's, it, you're sprinting in and out of corners. It's, it's, yeah, it's a really demanding, like physically. I mean, I used to find it tough. It didn't suit me as a bike racer. I've never had a good race around once in my life. <laughs> I bloody hate the place, frankly. But, um, but yeah, it's, I, I liked more physical, as in common. I, I was a climber, a bit old school. Stick me on a forest road uphill with a nice flowing single track and I'm happy boy. Right. So on that stuff, which is big physical stuff, throwing the bike around, technical ups and downs, yeah. Yeah, it was too much for me as a racer. Wow, crikey. Uh, let's talk about the women's. Now, a uh, French woman, um, Ferran Provost, won yeah. the race, her first world title, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and a big comeback. Yeah, so she's had some... She's, she was a world champion in multiple disciplines, you know, the biggest thing in cycling, and yeah. then had some... Arterialist, you have to have some big operations, and then as this is a big comeback, and all year she's been getting closer and closer to the front. Yeah, uh, and to fight back, you know, win the biggest race of the year is yeah unbelievable. And it did mean a lot to her, didn't it? Yeah, uh, but quite a comeback by uh, Yolanda Neff during the race. Uh, she was in third place at one point, and she she reeled in um, McConnell pretty yep. pretty efficiently towards towards the end of the race, didn't she? And it was, was it was on that technical climb, right? Yeah, I mean, she did. McConnell did seem to be struggling. Yeah, I mean, if you're fatigued, that's where the that's the toughest bit. If your legs are starting to cramp, to get them literally get the pedals round there. So if somebody's got good legs and mentally as well, once you see someone on that climb, you can see quite a long way ahead. Yeah, it's almost a minute long. Oh, crikey. From bottom to top, so you can see a minute's worth. And if you've got someone in your sights, the, that, the, the, yeah, that helps. You know, yeah, it must help massively, right? Yeah, yeah. The psychology of it's ridiculous. You know, if you're catching somebody, yeah. And why is that then? Do you, do you, is there a danger of you using too much energy trying to catch somebody as well, though? There's a risk, yeah. But I think, well, I mean, there's a big thing, the psychology of being catching or being caught and what that does to your morale. I mean, all those guys are right on the edge of your whole, half your body saying to race, the other half your body saying, can you just stop and have a sandwich? <laughs> so actually, you're right on the knife edge between which one to choose. Yeah, and you talk, you talk about stop and have a sandwich. I noticed that uh, Ferran Provo actually did stop on her last lap in one of the, one of the switchbacks. I was thinking, what on earth is she doing? She's she got problems or anything, but she just uh, took her time, lined up the switchback and got off the bike and went again. I mean, really? that's how much time she actually had in the bag. Yeah, 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 that you can process things like that. Yeah. Uh, from a British perspective, uh, Annie Last, amazing result. Great race, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and not off the best second lap. I think she had a flat tyre on the second lap, which put her back a bit. Right. So, and then she was coming through. She's one of the fastest racers on the last few laps. So a sixth place is great. Yeah she'll be thinking she probably could have got on the podium. Yeah. And in the junior women, there was a great result, right? Uh, junior men. Jun sorry, junior men. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk, actually, we'll talk junior about women did well as well. Yeah. However, the standout ride was, yeah, Charlie Aldridge and junior men. Because I was going to ask you, where, you know, where is British cross-country at? Yeah. And, and, he, he... and it hasn't been great. Right. There's some, there's some good standout riders, but as an overall, there's not the strength in depth that... Mm -hmm. GB Daniel's got by a long way. Yeah. You know, we get the odd rider come through, you know, you go back. You know, I don't count myself as one of standout ones. I wasn't a medal winner, but you know, Liam Colleen could win a medal on his day. Yeah. Grant Ferguson's come through. He, you know, he's a really strong rider. He had a good ride actually on Sunday, yeah, yeah. but not as good as he has been. Um, in the women's, Annie, 
Evie Richards. Yeah. She had a good ride. But yeah, Evie so- Richards. Where's Evie Richards from? She's Melvin. Right, okay. Yeah, so she does a bit. Yeah, she's come through and she's had some great results being a world champ, um, but had some health issues. So she had a, for her to come back and finish fourth. Yeah. But yeah, Charlie Aldridge, junior men's cross country world champ. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you this, Ollie, that you were part of the British team. There must have been times where, like, what, what happens at the Worlds is everyone hangs out, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. the British team hang out together, the cross country and the downhill. There must have been occasions where you must have been hanging out with a couple of characters from the downhill scene, right? A few. <laughs> a few stories, yeah. But no, no it, it, the, the world is, I, I always liked, I always preferred being in, I was a mountain biker, we started together with, you know, junior worlds, or, you know, worlds when we were talking about in the early days, 93, 94. Yeah. Steve Pete, Warner, Will Longdon, all in the same places, all right. in the same teams. And we, were, how, we didn't consider ourselves a cross country or down here, we were just mountain bike. Yeah. How does that work? And how does the dynamic work in a, in, a, in a situation like that where you're all brought together for the first time that year, probably, right? Yeah, it's weird, <laughs> I think. But, but I think actually there's the differences in what cross country and downhill go personality wise or from the outside. The persona is they're doing different things. Yeah. But in reality, they're not. Right. They're all really professional all working bloody hard all practicing hard they're just doing it on different bikes at different times in the day and actually the persona is that one will talk about their what they've had for dinner that day and one will talk about how many beers they're going to have next week yeah but actually during the one up to the race yeah they're all doing the same stuff but there is one thing though right there is one thing that separates uh, cross country from downhill or at least in the past yeah. and that was the skin suits Oh, now, God, in the yeah. past, the British downhillers, or any, any downhillers for that matter, used to whinge and whine about the skin suits. And yeah, at the yeah. World Championships, oh, God, we're going to do this. But I, that's not, no longer the case, right? No, no, they're just getting the sewing machine to their normal <laughs> kit, right? <laughs> There's some pretty tight motocross pants, right? <laughs> uh, right, OK, so uh, the men's race... Nino Schurter, yeah. yeah, unstoppable. Yeah, uh, his eighth World Championships is fifth on the trot, I yeah. think. Mental, absolutely bonkers. Machine, absolutely machine. But if you were going to design a course, we said about the technicality of the course. But if you're going to design a circuit for for Nino Schurter, Monsena, yeah, it, it is right up his street. So it's every climb is most climbs are technical. They're steep, really technical descents, natural. You've got to nail your line. All the things that he's really strong at. Um, Mont Saint Anne is yeah um, yeah and he absolutely nailed it is he actually weak at anything no <laughs> no <laughs> no not at all and yeah. I think if, if you're going to say he was going to be I mean this is really critical he's 10 out of 10 on everything if you're going to give him one nine mm-hmm. it would be climbs over kind of five minutes but they don't exist anymore right you know they might have existed in 96 but they don't exist anymore uh, his precision was pretty startling actually uh, he seemed to be hit he see, his body position and his line everything seems to seem to be the, replicated every single lap yeah yeah. his technical skill is great um, and there's some other guys that are technically good at him I think once or twice but it's just his processing and how he can find new lines different lines and then hit that line every time right. is up there with the really good downhillers that I. So seen. how important is it then? How important is it, is it to hit your lines in a in a in a cross country race like that? I think Mont Saint Anne even more so. So we saw uh, in the women's race quite a lot of flats. Yeah. In the men's race, second and third both had to have a I flat mean, and come you, back. You've got to feel for old uh, Kirch Bomber, right? Oh gee, yeah. I mean, he was he was second. He second, wasn't far off. Go into the woods. Exactly. Second, which is, which is what like a kilometer from the finish. Oh, yeah, and comes out walking his bike oh, with an inner tube hanging out. Not an inner tube. Devastating. Hanging out. But, devastating. But that's where Nino was on his line every time, and Mont Saint Anne will catch you out if you go offline. Same with the downhill, mm-hmm. but to a you know yeah. more extreme. But if you go offline, you get caught out. Some tracks you get away with it. Mm-hmm. There, it's too rocky, it's too rough, yeah. and that's when you burp a tire. Well, it showed in uh, you know a major yours, Laurie Greenland in the final. Obviously, yep. it, was, it was down to the uh, a puncture which he had in in the downhill final. But yeah, it's it's really important. Uh, on tires, then, um, what kind of tire pressures do you run on a cross country race like that, with, with which has got loads of rocks? I used you, to run about you... 22, 23. twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-three. <laughs> They're getting less now. I've, I've been quoted seventeen, what? eighteen. You mean that's low? Crikey. Well, Hi. well, I guess it's my weight. I guess I'm 90 kilos. I'm going to be running like 30 PSI. Yeah, the guys now, I've been just following some tech reports and bits and bobs. So, you know, the, 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 the Scott guys uh, with Nino and Kate Courtney are running wider rims, bigger tyres. When, when you say wider, what width rims? 30 mil on 2.30s? On yeah, on 2.25, 2.3 tyres. Crikey. The and down- then running them at like 17, 18 PSI. The Daniels will be running the 30 mil rims. Yeah, yeah. 
bigger tires, so trying to get this lower pressure, and you see some like Mont Saint Anne. Yeah. You know, so low tread, so yeah. hardly any tread, but low pressures. So really what, can, low. what can a weight tire then? We're talking like sub kilo? Oh, 450, 400 grams Whoa! a tire. <laughs> and again, that's where you're saying about the world, just throw the kitchen sink at it. Yeah. You get more punches at the world's because people run lighter tires. Right. It's like, so tires, if you're going to, it's wheels and tires, isn't it? On a bike, you know, that's yeah. where you rotational mass, blah, blah, blah. So if you're going to take weight off, that's where you do it. And at Worlds, everyone goes, do you know what? I've got my light tyres and I've got my super-duper light tyres. Mm -hmm. At a World Cup, you're worried about the points, the rankings, the overall. Yeah. At the Worlds, you just go, ah, oh, sod it. 450 grams. Yeah. Jack, you won't have, you'll never have ridden a 450-gram uh, tyre in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mental. <laughs> and that's what they're trying to get round. And that's why when, you know, you hit a rock with one of those, yeah. you, you can rip it or burp it or, yeah, yeah it's uh, pushing it pretty hard. Uh, but yeah, amazing result from uh, from Scherter there. Now, I want to ask you a question. Uh, now, what do uh, Christoph Souser, Marco Fontana, Julian Absalon, Miguel Martinez, uh, Kulhavi have in common? E-bike racers. Well, no, actually, uh, four, of them, <laughs> four of them are Olympic gold medalists in yeah. cross country. Four Olympic gold medalists. Yeah. And you're right, though. <laughs> they are e-bike races. Was that the most eclectic mountain bike <laughs> world championship field you've ever seen in your life? Yeah, I, 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 I thought that was brilliant. What a mix-up. <laughs> yeah, the old boys coming back. And... Yeah. And uh, I think Jose Hermida would have ridden it, but he didn't want to... Because the last time Hermida was at uh, Montana, he won a, won a world championship. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I heard, think... Yeah, he was on the commentary with... with with Rob on. Yeah, I think next year you'll see him at uh, at the World Championships. What, what do you think about the whole business of e-bike racing? I think at a world's level, it's a bit funny. I think it's e-bike's cool, but brilliant. They enable, we sell them at my bike shop. We've got yeah. guys involved, great. I can't quite get my head around having a, a, a UCI Worlds. <laughs> quite, I can't, you know, it's, it's, it's enables people to go riding fun, more up things. There's all the benefits of e-mountain bikes. Yeah. Having it as a UCI Worlds, I don't know how can you restrict, you know, de-restricting them. Are you going to start doing kind of doping tests for riders and then engine tests? I, I, exactly. I, I it's, think it's, it's a it's not a le it's not level, is it? No. So I it think it's level. it's a good thing for the industry. I'm sure they're, they're yeah. you know, the guys that specialise to win the race will make a massive deal of that. Yeah. They'll love it. So Alan Hatherley won the race from yeah. South Africa, another world champion. Yeah, and then he's in the race on Sunday, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> at what point are you now, you know? They'll make it so if you're a current UCI racer, you're not allowed to race it. I, you know, if you haven't got an Olympic title, yeah. you're not allowed to do it. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I personally, I think that uh, e-bike racing should like the previous week. I was in. Um, uh, we did a race from Verbier to Comoir yeah, and, yeah. and Chamonix back to Verbier. It was the Tour of Mont Blanc. Yeah. And Christophe Souser and Marco Fontana were, were racing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like when you race in, though, it, it's more of an endurance. It's almost like Formula One. You've got to work out what mode. You've got to, yeah, you've yeah. got to have a strategy for your battery. Yeah. I think maybe that's where e-bike racing should go rather than the short, punchy things where everyone's going to be riding in turbo anyway. Yeah, but, um, yeah I think Revan ripping an hour and a half uh, around Mont Saint Anne. I don't know, I think there's probably a better way of doing it than that. Yeah, but, I, yeah. but I think, yeah, it's getting, the more guys that are riding, I mean, it's getting guys on mountain bikes. Exactly. And if it raises the profile and makes them more acceptable than... And I guess, you know, it does inspire other people to come and ride bikes, as you say. Uh, right, downhill. Yeah. Downhill. <laughs> uh, that looked punishing. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert on the downhill. I've followed it for a long time. But, but as a fan... But, I watched that last night with my head in my hands. But you are an expert when it comes to training, and obviously you guys train Laurie Greenland. You've seen what effort he puts into preparation. Oh, I've seen those guys over the years, you know, when PT won his Worlds, mm -hmm. and we were talking about kitchen sink, that yeah. guy when he won in... 2009. Oh, you know, yeah. equipment, training, prep. Yeah. And, you know, I did some stuff with Steve that year. Oh, did you? Through journalists. Yeah, we were linked. We did quite a lot of stuff for MBUK that year. Right. Um, and we kept bumping in. I seen, and I, we did a big thing in Sheffield, actually, with the guys he was training with there. Right. And yeah, I mean, that, he, he was working. That was one hundred percent that year to yeah. get prepped for that one. And yeah, and we see, and I see Laurie every. So my um, business partner at BW Cycling, Andy Wadsworth, mm -hmm. trains uh, Laurie. Yeah. So physical training and a bit of the mental side as well. Um, so we see him. I see him a couple of times a week working hard, and you see right. the transformation over the he last few years. He has. I mean, Laurie used to be a, a small lad, but now he's 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 like a rugby centre for. Isn't he really? He's, he's a like... tough bastard now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's square, but yeah. it, but it but it's usable. Yeah, you know, and you see how hard those guys train and what they have to do. But then when you see Mont Saint Anne, and I see it from a, 
you know, there's a technical side, but yeah. I see it what that what they're having to do physically, and that's where Andy comes in. Yeah. So he can see well. Actually, he he knows Matt. He's a good mountain biker in his time, um, and he knows that what those guys physically have to do. And I know some of the training things they've got mm. on their sleeves yeah. and how they approach it and some of the indoor training sessions they do on the bikes as well, yeah. the gym stuff, how that's trying to link to that event. It's so physical, mental. I mean, that, it looked, it does look like one of the most physical tracks on the circuit. I mean, Val is pretty physical as well. I mean, you only have to talk to some of the pros and they say, well, I can't actually hold on to the handlebars. That's, yeah. it's, you, know, you, you can't see these things, can you? No. You but if you broke them. down that track, the downhill track, into a physical four minutes yeah. so say you're like okay we're going to have the downhill track and then you're going to go right this is the bit where you're holding on to handlebars this is the bit where you're pedaling and make that into like a circuit in a gym yeah it would be bonkers I you know think, i don't be, think it'd be many people going to the gym but uh, that's what they're trying to do yeah oh, that's what laurie's doing in the week they're really? trying yeah, yeah 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 it's so, like here's your downhill track here's what it's like in a gym right yeah. go for your life <laughs> So when you've got uh, when you've got a season of World Cup race and you've got the World Championships comes you know during a, a hectic schedule, how how do the riders manage their intensities? I mean you can't you can't be at hundred percent all the time. What's how does that work? Yeah, I think for cross country, um, I think for downhill, I was thinking about this in the week. You know how I saw Laurie last week before he went, and he he just looked so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And you think well he's got he's going with confidence. So I think downhill is you've got your physicality but that the most important thing is the confidence i think for those guys yeah you know if they go with confidence because they've had a win or a ride they're in good shape mm. so i think it's a mental aspect physically they're probably staying similar most years yeah for, for cross country it's the physical aspect is obviously bigger mm. and for those guys trying to manage to see you know kate courtney great start to the year drifted off you know i don't know what's yeah. going on but she's trying to manage that early season form and make it last a year is mm. difficult. Yeah. And then you see some people that come through. Yeah. Um, I mean, you talk, you talk about confidence there. Now, and Aaron Gwynn, and, and, and Mountain Iron was the place where a lot of people like, were having comebacks. In, in the women's, we had uh, Miriam Nicole, who'd been out with an injury, uh, Tani Seagrove, who'd been out with an injury, and also Aaron Gwynn. Now, uh, now, there's a guy who's obviously been struggling early in the year. He was like not up to speed in you know, the first race and then injuries and stuff like that. Um, but it is a place where there have been some comebacks in the, in, over, the, over the years. Sam Hill came back in 2010 and won the World Championships there. Um, and so it happened in the women's, the women's downhill. Uh, Miriam Nicole took the win there um, from Tani Seagrave. But I think it's great to see those guys back on the circuit. Everyone wants to race against the top guys. Exactly. It's, it, whatever the discipline or whatever the race, you want the, everyone wants to see the best guys there. And everyone racing, if you're going to win... You want to win against the best guys. You don't want to see somebody, well, you know, I've had that a couple of times, on, you know, not a world level, but a lower level. Yeah, well done. You, you know, but, <laughs> there's a but, you yeah, know, and that, yeah. even if it doesn't matter, you still, you can only race who you, who's yeah, there, yeah. but there's still a but. You, know, yeah, you want to beat I, the best guys. Yeah, I don't think there's any buts about Miriam Nicole. And it lines things up uh, for the final race, which is in Snowshoe, which is on the east coast of America next week. So, a uh, massive battle between Tani and, our, and Miriam next week for the yeah, final yeah. World Cup race. Um, but yeah, what a track. Um, if it looks tough, like, like we were talking earlier, if it looks tough on TV, now, the men's race scared the shit out of me, I have to say. Oh, I did, yeah. I, was, as was a, like, <laughs> I, I had my head in my hand a few times. It was like, and it, and it got progressively scarier. Oh, yeah. As the race went by. Now, um, Matt Walker from New Zealand was in the hot seat for hours and hours on end. And then um, there, there'd been lots of talk during the week. Minar's going to do something special. And he did. He put an immaculate run down. And that blows my mind when you see Minar. You see him going down the hill and it's like, is, is, he, is, he, is there something wrong? Is he, is he actually pushing there? He's so, he doesn't use any. Yeah, he's crazy smooth. Unnecessary movement. There were similarities between him and Nino shooter in the cross country there is isn't there yeah you know they've been yeah. doing it for years they're yeah. multiple world champions yeah. and they but they just get it there's not a, there's not a line out they're not ragged no. at all you know they're not going to get the flat tire yeah because everything is on on point no they know exactly how to apply themselves actually i was going to talk to you about that it was was with the ages of the women seemed to be young seemed to be like in the late 20s whereas the men in the cross country was like in like more in the 30s is, mm. is that like a trend that's happening or i think it's getting as the racing's got or cross country as it's got less um, well, it's got shorter racing, less endurance and more speed and tech focused. I yeah. think that suits younger people a bit more. Right. So the ages in general have come back a little bit. Yeah. 
and they'll, I think they'll keep coming back as yeah. it gets faster and faster. I think yes. you're getting races now that are under an hour and a half. So yeah, sorry to sorry to move away from downhill there for a second across cross country. Let's let's go back to downhill. Sorry, where were we? We were with Greg Minar who put the run together, uh, and then Laurie. Yeah. Your man Laurie Greenland came down. He was uh, he was green a lot of the way down, and then he went wrong on the step. And everyone thought he made a mistake, but as it transpired, he had a had a puncture. Yeah. I reckon Laurie could have had that race, you know. Yeah, uh, it, it was. Yeah, I mean, he was green, green, and then yeah. on that big rock slab where people were, you know, all the you know gap yeah. jump or thing on it. I've never seen someone go out the screen before. I, exactly. <laughs> when someone goes out the screen, That's, and you're like, oh, yeah. the guy's gone out the screen. Yeah, and he's like. Right, how does this work? And then he suddenly popped in again and carried on riding. Yeah, and, yeah he, that and, was, uh, and he and he think he, he got, got over the line and he was like only half a second off or something like that. Still close. Yeah, mental. And then and then Piron came down. Amory Piron, who's the guy that's been one another one of those guys who's been chucking the kitchen sink at races this year, and he looked he looked fast up the top, really fast. I mean, obviously a bigger guy is going to be carrying maybe a little bit more momentum. Yeah, seventy kilometers an hour through the speed trap. I mean, that's trucking on. <laughs> or oh, you could see they were just all over the place, weren't they? The bikes were... Oh, it's meant... Oh, it's yeah. absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, 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 it's great for the sport to see, yeah. to see that. Um, now, Piron wanted... He obviously knew, he knew he'd made a mistake. And then so too, Danny Hart came down afterwards and you could see in Danny's eyes, he thought, no, he's not happy with what he's done there. And, um, and then Brosnan. Brosnan comes down and... I think Brosnan thought he'd won the race. If you look back, he was two and a half seconds up. Maybe maybe he celebrated a bit too early, Ollie. I think he just got beaten, I think, by the better guy. I mean, they both had great runs, didn't they, from yeah. what I could see. And but he obviously got carried away by the emotion of it, and he was, like, punching his... I think if you've, had the, if you've had a great run like that, mm -hmm. and I think that you've finished yeah. smooth... Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, got away. Got You'd away. probably be pretty confident walk, in it. Walk the tightrope. <laughs> yeah. And you go, actually, I couldn't do a single thing better. You'd yeah. probably be a bit excited. But then to see, to see Lord Bruni go green. Yeah. Mind-blowing. Yeah. And, I mean, the bike was all over the place. His body was all over the place. It was absolutely... Jack, what have you to say about it? Well, it wasn't that ragged, but he was <laughs> ragged for maybe Bruni. Yeah, you can tell that... Uh, in, in a in a sport that is dominated by Fox and Rock Shocks, to see like the Swedish brand Olin sort of you know get another yeah, you world see championship. See their mechanics at the end were all yeah were obviously pretty pumped. Right? No, they so. were. They were really pumped. You could see on on the TV they were like they were very very happy with that. So it looks like things are going to be ratcheted up in the final of the World Cup uh, at Snowshoe uh, on the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a good race. Isn't it? Um, cross country, women's cross country, uh, Yolanda Neff and Kate Courtney battling it out for the win there. Yeah, they're, they're pretty close together. Mm -hmm. I think 70 points or something between them and they've yeah. got, you know, it's 370, I think you get if you win both. Yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. they're still, you yeah. know, they're, they've got a big scrap. Yeah, so Schurter obviously is going to wrap that up. But yeah, with him and Von der Poel, with Van der Poel missing, so yeah. he's racing Road Worlds. Um, so I don't think he, I don't think he's going to suddenly go from Road Worlds to Snowshoe. No, I don't know. What uh, I've been it's been good. For, uh, I mean, Kate Courtney, amazing. Uh, Aaron Gwynn came on the scene in around 2012. America has been pretty strong in the last uh, last six or seven years, right? Yeah, and it's the same in cross country too. Less. Um, I mean, cross country's had a bit of a resurgence lately. Mm. Um, so Kate North Courtney obviously leading that, but the Americans had three women in the top. 20, top 50 yeah. on the weekend. So they're looking strong, not just as a nation, but also it starts qualifying Olympic places. Yeah. yeah. So we're in that process now of qualifying nations and rankings mm -hmm. for that. So they're looking really strong. Yeah. So in the downhill, Aaron Gwynn. Aaron Gwynn had a pretty disappointed, I'd imagine he'd be disappointed with his result. It was 12th on the weekend. Um, but a load of American races there, Charlie Harrison, Dakota Norton. So uh, doing pretty doing pretty strongly. Uh, but it's got to be uh, it's got to be Bruni Brosnan or Piron at the final, right? I'm sure he. I'm sure it'll t Bruni will take some stop in. It looks that way, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And in the women, like we mentioned earlier, um, Miriam Nicole and Tani Seagrave. That's going to be an amazing battle. Uh, Ollie, thanks for coming in. Uh, nice to get me. some insight from your previous World Championships. Can't believe you did so many of them. <laughs> My back's telling me I have. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, great. So, uh, well, hopefully join you next week uh, from Snowshoe and the East Coast of America. Yeah, another good week's racing. Yeah.